Good morning, everyone. This is a day to honor a fallen hero. Mobile police officer Justin Billa, who lost his life in the line of duty last week, will be honored with a service here at Cottage Hill Baptist Church. After that this morning, many of the people he served with will turn out for a procession, then a solemn graveside service. Good morning again, everyone. I'm Eric Reynolds. And I'm Sarah Wall. Thank you for joining us this morning. The funeral service for Officer Justin Billa begins at 10 this morning at Cottage Hill Baptist Church. We're preparing now for the procession to Mobile Memorial Gardens. As we've been sharing, there is a route that will be taking down Cottage Hill to Azalea Road, from Azalea down to Highway 90. From Highway 90 to Three Notch Road, and of course there at Highway 90 at Knollwood, where the Mobile Fire and Rescue Department has unfurled a 30 by 50 American flag in honor and tribute to Officer Vila. That will be another part of the processional as it makes its way on to Three Notch and then on to the Mobile Memorial Gardens. 4.33 now, we're following some breaking news this morning. Fox 10 News is trying to gather more details about an incident at a home on Michigan Avenue in Mobile. When our crews arrived, there were still police cars on the scene, and we're still asking questions about what occurred here. But according to witnesses, there was a shooting, and someone was taken to the hospital. Police have not confirmed yet that report. Now, when we learn more about this incident, we'll be sure to let you know on air and, of course, online at fox10tv.com. 5.43, and as we mentioned earlier, an accident on Interstate 10 as traffic backed up near the Theodore Dawes exit. This is the eastbound side of I-10 there in Mobile, West Mobile County. Authorities have been working on a two-vehicle accident there involving an 18-wheeler in the area that happened early this morning about 3 a.m. As we told you earlier, the stretch of interstate between exit 10 and exit 13 is closed. That's the eastbound lanes. Now, as you see there, the traffic's moving on the westbound side. So you may want to use Highway 90 and completely avoid this area if you can, if you're headed I-10 eastbound between exits 10 and exit 13 this morning. Kendra Turley joins us from live in the studio this morning with a breakdown of one of those amendments that you will be deciding tomorrow. Good morning, Kendra. City officials are now getting their first look at possible damage. Of course, sunrise has been about an hour now. Mobile Mayor Sandy Stimson is at Mobile Police Headquarters right now. Now turning our attention to southern Baldwin County. Officials and residents paying close attention, of course, to Tropical Storm Gordon and its potential impact on the area. Pal, thank you very much. And now, yesterday it was a working holiday for lifeguards as hundreds made their way to the Gulf Shores beaches. Red flag conditions, though, warning of the potentially dangerous rip currents. Now, while it was no work, just relaxation for the beach goers, many found it hard to believe that a hurricane warning was in effect. It was in the hands of a couple of uh, people who care about this area and care about veterans. Eddie Irby, who we've been speaking with for uh, several weeks now, talking about the need for this. And we were talking earlier to Mr. Albert Wingfield, who was a Marine Corps sergeant, served in Vietnam as well was one of the people who was instrumental in getting you also motivated to do something about Oakland. All right, well, we thank both of you so much for being concerned about this, and they are making it happen. In fact, uh, there's a cleanup about to take place this morning with Coast Guard active duty folks coming out here and being a part of it. And then tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m., you can also be a part of the cleanup here at Oakland Cemetery. We'll tell you more in our next check-in with you, Sarah. It's uh, something to behold where Folks have pitched in here to make a difference. You can see the difference there in the background. At the time when everything was going on, you were worried about the outer bands and worried about um, safety. safety. We still were battling some of those strong winds, like 70, 80 mile an hour gusts out there. Wednesday morning, October 10th, and the Florida Panhandle is getting hit hard by one of its most powerful storms ever a Category 4 hurricane named Michael. In the midst of the news coverage, our crew spotted an American flag. We first saw it on the ground. We couldn't get out because parts of the gas station, they were blowing off, and uh, there were power lines around and everything, and so the conditions just weren't good for us to get out in the storm at that time. So we circled around, came back, and that's when 
things had improved enough for us to get out. To see the flag like that, um, it was sad to see. I picked it up off the ground, but it was tangled on a pole with the string. So I couldn't get it off until I found out where it was clipped at. Marine Corps veteran Tom Claxton was watching our coverage. It was just extremely frustrating to see our flag and see that it was uh, on the ground from such an unbelievable event as this hurricane. It's like 400,000 veterans on this Gulf Coast. Now, we all fought for this flag. We respect it. Before Michael, the flag was flying proudly at a Trustmark bank branch in Panama City Beach. I'm glad we were able to get back to it and retrieve it. In hurricane conditions, it took Rodney almost 15 minutes to retrieve it. He and Adam brought the storm tattered, soaking wet flag back to Mobile. Fox 10 News had it cleaned. We contacted Trustmark Bank. We told them that we had their flag and would return it. But Tom Claxton called Fox 10 and told us because the flag had been on the ground, it had to be retired. So Claxton summoned the P.L. Wilson Detachment of the Marine Corps League flag detail to do the honors. Claxton also reached out to military veterans in Panama City. The people, when I talked to them in uh, Panama City, they man, oh yeah, yeah, we want to be part of that, you know, because we want to, this is our, our town. It's been destroyed. So Rodney and Adam and Mobile veterans will present the flag to Panama City veterans, who will then return it to Trustmark Bank officials for its retirement. We did the right thing, and I'm glad we'll have the chance to return it. The one thing that we can always kind of wrap our hands around and come together on is disasters. And we always, as Americans, come together and help each other out. And this is kind of like a symbol of that, us helping rebuild a little part. It may not be something big, but it's kind of helping restore everyone's hope and uh, belief that this place will come back bigger and better. I'm Eric Reynolds, Fox 10 News.